Hello, my name is Lenka. I am currently a PhD student at the University of Bristol, and today I'll give you an overview on my research, which rethinks the concepts and the application of spatial interaction models and their spatial structure. If you're not familiar with the terms, we refer to spatial interaction when we talk about um, any kind of flow data where actors, usually humans, move between the places and which can be visualized in a network. Spatial interaction models are then the framework we use to model this data. Um, they have been very successful, um, but um, their performance is a continuous discussion in the field. We, uh, in this research, identify the three main gaps. Firstly, I've, and we've noticed that not only we often apply the models for all people and all scales, um, we also apply them to all network topologies. In essence, we are using one formulation to fit all possible, all possible data without consideration of the nature of the data. This is especially important when our interaction data has a very specific topology, such as bipartity or multipartity where the actors can only go certain directions given by the network. Um, secondly, we lack methods that validate the spatial um, patterns of model networks. The current validation methods um, evaluate only how accurately are each individual flows predicted. They're not able to evaluate how the models are able to replicate the patterns of the flow. And thirdly, we're still facing a vague definition of what the spatial structure actually is. And um, to be more specific, we need a more conceptual description of what spatial structure is and how it relates to spatial interaction so we can build models with more confidence. In this research, we try to address all of these issues, but some of them are more easier to handle than the others. Um, in the first case, we need to just include a variety of data, a variety of networks in modeling in order to validate the effectiveness of the models. For the second case, we can look for a ways to validate spatial patterns by borrowing um, some of the tools from network science. For example, we took a Patrick algorithm, which is a measure of network structure based on the links in the network and found that in comparison to existing tools, uh, we use for measuring interaction structure, it, it is much more efficient in capturing not just the local, but also the global relationships within the whole network. We can then use the page rank to compare the interaction structure of the observed network and the predicted network. With this approach, we found that traditional modeling approaches, such as the Boston regression, seems to be very effective in replicating patterns of simple networks, but is not very good in replicating patterns of networks with specific topology. Interestingly, this is not the case um, for machine learning approaches, which are very effective in replicating patterns for all types of networks. The last issue is the most challenging one. We simply are missing the link between the theory and the application of spatial structure. Although this might be a very different thought process for geographers who are more often so, um, the, who more often search for the drivers of the interaction process than for the conceptual description. It is not a new thought process to network centers who often approach modeling from the other way around. Um, we found that we can divide spatial interaction into a locational network with, um, with the distance as a weighted edge and functional net network where the actual flow volume is the weighted edge. Um, then we can just think of the interaction models as models with a two components, the locational one and the functional one. There's some more work needed on this, but we think that just adjusting the way we think of the spatial structure could potentially help us to clarify some of the unknowns in the modeling framework and connect the theory to the application. Overall, um, this research suggests that we should validate our models using a variety of networks. It also suggests we should think more critically about validation methods and what does it actually mean in good performance for our spatial interaction models. It strongly encourages us to think um, to cross the boundaries of geographical research. And lastly, it encourages us to think beyond the theory and link the established concepts to their application. Thank you for your attention.